So now this is going to be another quick demonstration video of the uh, J310 uh, JFET transistor and channel depletion mode being used as a current source, which is all I really see JFETs being used for. So we have the source, the middle pin, and then the gate, the bottom pin. There's a resistance between those two pins. The gate is going to be charging the capacitor there. It's actually going to go through the two resistors from the source. The drain is going to provide the current. That is the uh, top pin there. So flat side is to the left for a quick rundown. Right now, we have this just to make sure the capacitor is fully discharged. We're going to set this meter to measure milliamps. If they have numbers, set it to a number higher than you're going to measure and make sure the probe is where it measures milliamps or however else your meter works. Now, we are going to remove this jumper. One thing with capacitors is if you have a steady current, so I picked the uh, 2200 ohm resistor and uh, 330 ohm resistor because it gets us really close to one milliamp of current going up to the drain. And there you can see we got 1.05. And it went for like a few seconds holding that current and then now it's going down uh, quickly as you can see there. That's because we are charging the capacitor to seven volt and for like four seconds we should have got that steady current but then the voltage of the capacitor got close enough to the supply voltage where it threw this off. So now we're going to look at why this circuit is important. We have the capacitor discharged again. We got this jumper. Of course, we only do that with lower value capacitors. This is 1000 microfarad. Don't go uh, much higher than that. And also we only charged it to 7 volts. So we shorted that. There, uh, I didn't even see a spark, but there may be a small spark. And I have a 0 volts just slightly above that uh, bottom line there because we're going to work with seven volts we can go up to that uh, second to the top line let me get the uh, power supply a good uh, connection there and there you can see that uh, we have seven volts at the supply and uh, what we're interested in is measuring the voltage across the capacitor right now we're going to remove this jumper completely and now we're going to complete the circuit like we did through the meter remember current has to go through the meter to measure current and we're not measuring current here, we're measuring the capacitor voltage. But I do have to come up to the drain there of the uh, JFET. And there you can see, we have a ramp. That is what using a current source with a capacitor does. Now we saw before that uh, current kind of held really steady and then started going down. So you do see a curve there. But the main thing was, well, we had enough supply voltage to power the transistor and to charge the capacitor, we got a steady rise in voltage. So now what we're gonna do is raise the voltage to 12 volts. As you can see, it went off the uh, display there, out of the range. We're gonna come back and uh, zoom in, try to get as good of a look as uh, we can for the most part. And now we're going to discharge the capacitor. What this is gonna do, it's gonna give us basically the, the ramp and uh, maybe we'll get a spark here because this is 12 volts. I didn't see a spark. Okay. But uh, it is 12 volts, but it's only a 1000 microfarad uh, capacitor. Again, very large capacitors, probably anything more than this for the general part. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you shouldn't short circuit. You could get a high uh, current, a big spark. You might weld them out together or whatnot. But in any case, we discharged the capacitor. Now we're going to come back here. And uh, the voltage measurement we're taking, by the way, is these uh, alligator clips. They come from the other side of the cable of the pocket oscilloscope there. And I just clipped them to jumpers so that I can place them wherever I want really easily into the breadboard. So now we gotta go to the drain again. And it's gonna take somewhere about eight seconds because we got uh, up to eight squares because we got, let me pause it, hopefully right at that line. Because we got one milliamp of current actually slightly higher charge in a uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor. So one milliamp a second raises the voltage, uh, one volt. But again, we had slightly higher current and maybe the capacitor is slightly lower because when I do this, we have that line there. We should go over eight squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and uh, go uh, straight up to eight volts, but eight volts is over there, about a square earlier. So looks like we got a little more current for uh, this capacitor charging it than uh, one volt a second. So we could adjust the resistors and uh, change that, add a little more resistance. But in any case, you can see 
we have a straight line there that is a ramp. So if you need a steady voltage rise, this is a basic way to do that, to make a voltage ramp. So now that we have that 12 volt, let's do the uh, current measurement again. So again, the current goes through the meter. You have to make sure current is limited. So we limited it to basically one milliamp of current, uh, 1.05. And there you can see 1.06, and it's holding a lot longer because we have a higher supply voltage. As it gets closer to uh, 12 volts, as we saw with the oscilloscope, now the current's going down. That's why you saw if uh, we had more than 12 uh, squares, we would have saw the curve. But we saw the curve when we were working with the uh, 7 volts, when it got somewhere about 4 volts or so. The line stopped rising as fast and curved. It got uh, flatter. So now that was really about all I was going to cover, but we are going to cover a little bit more. So you can see we got the drain, the top pin, the flat sides to the left. This is the J310. If you got a different J fit, the pin layout may be different. And that's the only kind I got though. It's the only pin layout I know. So we got the uh, 2200 ohm resistor and then the 330 in series connecting the source over there to the gate and the current went through the drain, the source, those resistors into the capacitor. But uh, now we're gonna focus on just the capacitor. We had a, a faster charge than what I expected. So let's make sure we are actually at uh, 12 again, cause that's what the capacitor went up to. And we can uh, take the capacitor. I'm gonna go to the negative supply for both of them. I can see better than what's showing up on the camera. But the main thing is I wanted to see, there you can see we got uh, quite a bit of spark in there. When I got both sides to the negative side, of the power supply. So now this should be completely discharged. We're gonna measure the capacitance and you need a completely discharged capacitor to do so. It really did not like that uh, slot. And so now we're just going to two just random rows over there just to give us a solid way to measure capacitance. With this meter, it's uh, pretty simple. We just set to measure capacitance, the uh, capacitor symbol right there. We can leave the uh, red probe for measuring capacitance. My other meter, which is a, a bit more complex to use because it's not auto ranging, it has uh, two, I think two different slots for measuring uh, capacitance than the normal one. So we're just gonna touch the probes there. And uh, since this is auto ranging, it takes a little bit of time to uh, get it on the display. But yes, indeed, it's not 1000 microfarad. Uh, capacitors, they tend to have like a 10%, 20% tolerance. They generally are not anywhere near basically the exact value of what they are rated. But in uh, any case, that's why our voltage ramp went up faster than we expected. So we could have uh, modified the current to uh, make up for that so that we would have got uh, eight volts over eight seconds, which would raise eight squares up for eight squares across. But uh, the capacitance is lower, the current is slightly higher, and thus, that's why the ramp went up slightly quicker. So again, always make sure the meter is off. Make sure it's not set to measure current because it's easy to accidentally measure a voltage. As we said before, current needs to be limited when you're measuring current. So this video went on a whole lot longer than I expected, but I hope you still enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting to the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.